to Whitney High School Live. My name is Nafisa and I'll be your host for today. In addition, on Wednesday, November 18th is our very first family game night, Staff STEM students. Families will be able to play Gahoo about the faculty and the top three families will win amazing prizes. The Google form to RSVP can be found on the website under Student Council and the ASB Instagram bio and the Whitney High School Spirit Updates Facebook page. And now, on to the show. As you all probably know, this past week was a very tense one in the midst of the 2020 election. So next we have Athena Sarmiento recapping the election. So, before we start, I just wanted to say that all of the sources used for the information in this news segment is going to be linked in the description box below. November 3rd began the race between former Vice President Joe Biden and President Donald Trump on who would become the 46th President of the United States of America. It was a rocky ride on both the Democratic and Republican Party of the United States, so with many Americans filled with much anticipation from last week's nail-biter of an election, let's take a recap. It has been projected by the Associated Press that Joe Biden won the electoral vote of 290 to 214 and the popular vote of 75.1 million to 70.8 million as of November 7th at 10.30 p.m. Some of the states that received most of the attention during the 2020 election includes Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, and Pennsylvania. So, Trump won Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin in 2016, all of which are consisted of the blue wall. However, in this 2020 election, Democrats won back both Michigan and Wisconsin on November 4th. And while Nevada had six electoral votes needed to secure Biden a 270 vote win, on Saturday, Biden captured the presidency when the Associated Press declared him the victor in Pennsylvania with a 0.51% lead at 8.25 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That got him the state's 20 electoral votes, which pushed him over the 2070 electoral vote threshold needed to prevail. Now you might be wondering, why did it take so long for us to get actual results? The election day was on November 3rd, so what happened? Well, the 2020 election was vastly different than any other presidential election we've had, and many states made it easier to request a mail-in ballot amid the coronavirus pandemic and concerns about crowded polling places. Not to mention the states to look out for the most, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, all made a conscious decision to wait so there would be no counting of mail-in ballots prior to election day, as under state law, election officials are not allowed to process mail-in ballots until election day. So once you couple all of these factors in, along with the fact that mail-in ballots take a long time to verify, process, and count, it would make more sense as to why we did not get any results until after election day. So, President Donald Trump is supposed to be transferring his power from now until the inauguration of Joe Biden. But how did him and his administration react? President Donald Trump issued a middle-of-the-night premature claim of victory in a statement from the White House. He then said that he would take the election to Supreme Court to stop the counting. This was on November 4th, so millions of legitimate votes had yet to be counted and the race in half a dozen of the swing states had yet to been called either. In a statement issued by Trump in a White House speech shortly before 2.30 a.m., he says, This is a fraud on the American public. This is an embarrassment to our country. Him and his supporters also claim accounts of voter fraud, mostly in the states of Michigan and Pennsylvania. For example, others jumped on a data error in a map of Michigan that showed Biden getting a huge spike in votes in an update of results. This then sparked mass attention on Twitter as thousands of tweets were shared claiming that this was fraud. Then Decision Desk HQ, which tax election results and published the map, confirmed it was an error that was corrected. Here are more tweets issued by President Donald Trump on his Twitter during election week. And with the 2020 election coming to an end, Joe Biden's running mate, Kamala Harris, is now introduced as the first female vice president, the first black vice president, and the first Asian American vice president. Kamala Harris, the daughter of an Indian mother and Jamaican father, shatters racial and gender barriers in American politics and makes history. We did it. We did it, Joe. You're gonna be the next president of the United States. <laughs> so, to close off this segment, what are some of Joe Biden's promises? Um, if you look on his Twitter, he says that he wants to heal the nation, unite the nation, and strengthen the nation. But some of his policies include affordable health care, beating COVID-19, safely reopening schools, job and economic recovery for working families, securing our values as a nation of immigrants, supporting our veterans, tackling the climate emergency, strengthening tribal nations, and improving racial economic equity. We know that this 2020 election gave everyone a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety, so please make sure to take care of yourself and others. But what did you think about the 2020 election? Thank you guys so much for watching, and back to the host. And now, a video from Kokora Kara about Culture Day.
Every November 3rd, the Japanese celebrate Culture Day, or Bunga no Hi, to promote the Japanese culture, arts, and scholastic endeavors. On this day, the Japanese delve into Japan's rich culture and history, with visits to art, historical, and science museums, large parades and festivals, and an event called the Order of Culture Award Ceremony to honor individuals who make great contributions to both Japan and the world. Although a little late, you can still celebrate Culture Day by eating Japanese food, watching a Japanese film, or just appreciating the culture of Japan. and Amaterasu remained in her face. All right, thank you for that. And next we have a video from Chanti Club about Diwali. What's up Whitney? Shanti Club want to introduce you to the biggest festival celebrated in India called Diwali. It starts tomorrow, November 14th. We'll go over what it is and how you can celebrate. Diwali is typically referred to as the festival of lights and many people light lamps called Deepams around their house to symbolize the inner light that protects humans from spiritual darkness. In northern parts of India, Diwali marks the return of King Rama to Ayodhya after defeating the demon Ravana. Millions of lights are spread throughout the city to welcome him. In southern India, this festival is also known as Deepavali and celebrates the day Lord Krishna defeated the evil king Naragasura, freeing 16,000 girls from oppression. Others also associate Diwali with Goddess Lakshmi, who is the Hindu goddess of wealth and prosperity. In Jainism, Diwali is associated with the physical death and attainment of Nirvana of Mahavira. In Sikhism, Diwali highlights three important events in Sikh history, including the release of the Sikh Guru from prison. Diwali is not only celebrated in India, but in several countries around the world as well. Though there are multiple stories associated with Diwali, the overall theme remains the same the victory of light over darkness, knowledge over ignorance, and good over evil. In preparation for the Bali, people often clean their entire houses to let go of the old and usher into the new, much like turning over a new leaf. Many Hindus also light and clean their homes to welcome Goddess Lakshmi, who always resides in cleanliness and is thus only believed to bless clean households, which are defined by the thoughts of the individuals within them. People honor such deities on this day by partaking in pujas, which are essentially prayer service rituals done to offer gratitude to gods and goddesses. Most Hindus invite as many families as they can to take part in not only such pujas, but also feasts, which includes a variety of suits. Rangoli designs are interesting designs made on the floor and are usually made with rice, flowers, and or colored sand. These designs are usually made at the entrances of houses. The houses themselves are lined with deepam or candles to symbolize light and purity. Fireworks are also an important way people celebrate the Bali. Overall, Diwali is a beautiful festival filled with vibrant colors, bright lights, and delicious food. 
we would love to see how you guys celebrate Diwali, whether it's lighting a candle or having a feast. So make sure to post photos on Instagram and tag Shanti Club. No matter where or how you celebrate Diwali, just remember that it emphasizes the victory of good over evil. And now a video from Jenna Cerritos about the Take a Seat campaign. Hi everyone, I'm Charlene. And I'm Sabrina. And we're from Jen Up Cerritos, and we are continuing to do the Take a Seat campaign. For those of you who do not know us, Jen Up Cerritos is a student-led organization that advocates for student equity and pushes for change in our community. The Take a Seat campaign's purpose is to make sure the student representation is strong on our school board, and student voices are heard in the decision-making process for our district. Through this campaign, we're hoping to create a student board member um, position of the ABC Unified School District Board. However, according to Assembly Bill 261, we need to collect at least 500 signatures on our petition so that we are able to present our proposal to the school board. We currently have 370 signatures, leaving at least 130 more needed to be collected. We are hoping that all of you can take just a second out of your day to sign our petition. It is in our Instagram bio at genup.cerritos. If you've signed it already, thank you. And if you could please help us by sharing this petition with your friends, that would be amazing. Thank you. If you're a senior in the midst of college apps, and even if you're not, you're probably all aware of the UC schools. So next up, we have Harry's UC tier ranking. Hey Whitney, since UC applications are due at the end of November, I decided to make a UC tier list. First, we have UC Merced. They're known for being the newest UC and also being eco-friendly. And Michelle Obama spoke there once, so I'm going to put it in the B tier. Next up, we have UC Davis. It's located right between a tomato farm and a cow farm, which allows it to be ranked number one in the US in agricultural studies and also smelling like a cow. So I'm going to put it in the C tier. UC Irvine. In terms of a UC education, it's around the middle. It's not the best and it's not the worst. It's around 60% Asian, has an average looking campus, and it doesn't have great sports. But its League of Legends team is the best by far, so A tier. UCLA. It's the most applied to school in the nation. US News ranked it as the best public university, and Mr. and Mrs. Perry highly recommend it. So I would put it in the S tier, but they're also known for thinking the world revolves around them, so I'm going to put them right here in the center of the list. UC Santa Cruz. They got a really good STEM program, a great location, and also a beautiful campus. So I would put them in the A tier, but their mascot is a banana slug. So that would bump them down to C tier. But they don't have a football team just like Whitney. So I'm going to bump them back up to B tier. Next up, we have UC Riverside. They're known for being very progressive, they have great parties, and they're only two hours away from Vegas. It's said that some of the best friends you'll ever meet are from UC Riverside. So I'm gonna place them in the F tier, cause who needs friends? UC San Diego. They got a modern campus, great medicine and engineering programs, and no social life. So I'm going to place them right here in UCLA shadow. UC Santa Barbara. I don't know much about it except they're right next to the beach. They got great parties, but their culture consists mostly of frats. So I'm going to put it in the D tier. UC Berkeley. They're known as one of the best public universities in the world. They got rigor, they got clout, and they got memes. So I think it belongs in the S tier for Stanford Rejects. Check out StanfordRejects.com. Finally, we have USC. It's not technically a UC, but I'm just going to include it here anyways. So it has George Lucas and Mr. Jeans thinks it's the best school. So I'm going to put it in the S tier for Sir Please Let Me Pass Civics and also Spoiled Rich Kids. Check out this tuition. And that's it for the tier list. 
If you're a senior and you're thinking of going to UC, applications are due at the end of this month. So get working. Back to you, hosts. Anyways, that's all we have for the show today. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next Friday.